Happy Friday traders, Robert H here. I'm gonna do a long video today, talk about my week, talk about some trades I took, rant about some things. So for those of you who are new in the community, uh, you may have seen my name around the forums, maybe seen some of the videos in the Education Center. I've uh, recently had a baby, as I mentioned it, uh, earlier on this month, and I'm starting to get back into this. It was really rough in the beginning, trying to come back to this. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was almost like starting from scratch, right? You've been away for a month, two months, and kind of forget how to trade, right? Sometimes you come back from a weekend, you forget how to trade. Uh, but anyways, you know, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm, I'm one of the moderators in the community here. I used to be pretty active in the chat room, and uh, there's some legends going around that uh, I was never really existed, right? Kind of like Kaiser Soze from Usual Suspects. But I am real. You may see me popping in and out, really trying to um, be more active for you guys. Sometimes you guys will see me come in the midday and start doing play-by-play -play commentary on, on trades I'm not taking, right? Because they're quote-unquote too easy. Anyways, um, it was a pretty good week, right? We had uh, earnings, tech, tech stocks released, and we hit all-time highs. So it was a lot of uh, good moves. I took 10 trades this week, and that's uh, that's my sweet spot, roughly two trades a day, two to three trades a day. I look back on all my uh, good stretches, my positive months, the ones where I traded really well and consistently. I was averaging no more than three trades a day, right? It's when I started getting into the four, five, six, seven, eight trades a day realm is where things started getting you know slippery. I'd have green days, I'd have red days, they just get all mixed up. And that's one of the things I've um, come to realize after uh, being over, being uh, on this journey for over a year, right? The, I'm, I'm always saying this, the hardest part of this journey is figuring out what type of trader you are, right? A lot of us come into this game thinking we know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna trade penny stocks. I'm gonna short hard to borrow stocks. These guys are making 20 grand a day on YouTube. I'm gonna start doing that. You really don't know what type of trader you are until you've traded live for a few months, right? So in a way, this simulator um, is is kind of misleading, right? You do things that you wouldn't normally do. You try to trade as realistically as possible, but once you start getting uh, into the driver's seat here with the real money on the line and the emotions and the psychology and all that stuff, uh, things can quickly change. So it's taken me, you know, it took me probably six months, nine months to figure out what I'm really good at. And then there's kind of uh, gray areas where I kept trying to go back to trading someone else's style, getting in and out really quick. and and uh, just outside of my comfort zone. I, I, I figure if I sit on my hands and just wait for one good trade, that's all I need, 2%, right? Risk 1%, make back 2%, you're done. As Andrew says, beginner traders should aim for half a percent to 1% daily, right? In a month, so 10 to 20%, and that's accounting for red days. So if you can come up with 2% on a green day, you're good, right? That takes care of two red days if you ever encounter those. Um, but anyways, uh, that's uh, that's something that everyone needs to discover, right? What what type of trader are you? You're not going to trade like anybody else, right? You're not going to trade like anybody else, and don't fall for the the trap that you know that guy's making this much money, that that guy's this consistent, that guy looks this cool, so I have to trade like him. It's it's nothing like that, right? There's millions of ways to trade in this market, right? Think about all the indicators there are. There's like three thousand, four thousand indicators. Each one has probably ten settings. So you put all the combinations, the permutations of that, you probably end up with. 15 trillion uh, different technicals and indicators to go off of right there's keep it simple that's what i'm trying to do here i'm trying to just really simplify things range orders stick into two to three setups what i'm really good at what i'm good at identifying and that's what works for me right so if you're a member you, you know in the education center we have robert's rants there where i talk a lot about that stuff and episode one was basically patience and perspective when when the light bulb went off on my head and I said you know what I do best when I just sit on my hands and wait for that that A1, A plus setup, and off we go, right? And um, that that's what I'm, I'm trying to do now, coming back to, into this after taking two months off. Uh, that, that I'm really finding that that, that it's working for me. It, it fits my lifestyle. I, I sit down at the open, try to find a quick orb. That's like three, four, seven, ten minutes. Can't find that. I'll find A, B, C, D. Usually those will trend. Put a range order, step out, do what I need to do, come back and check up on it, right? So anyways, this is obviously a long intro here. Let's get to the week. Rad. R-A-D, this was Monday at the close. And if you have seen my posts in the forums, I have bad blood with this stock. I I took this stock long at $4 and like 81 cents. Back in, I wanna say, no, it was July, June, July of 2017. And I had no idea what I was doing. This was before I met Andrew, before I knew anything about day trading, I thought I was so smart. I just look at the charts and figure out where to buy. Right, a lot of us fall for this trap. Andrew fell for this trap. He was out there trading real money without any strategies. And I was I was guilty of that, right? Took it long into the, the close and I, I didn't want to accept a little five cent loss. I was like, ah, you know, I, I want break even, I want break even. Next day it opens, gaps down a bit. And over a period of three days, uh, some news came out. It was really bad. Uh, something about the buyout wasn't going to work out or something. And then it fell to like three bucks and then down to two bucks. And 
I think I got out for like two dollars and sixty cents. It was a fifty percent loss. It's like five grand at the time. So okay, well let's uh let's put day trading aside and figure out what else we can do with our life. Then I found Andrew. Uh, was it late late twenty seventeen? I guess right. Yeah, late twenty seventeen. So I have bad blood of the stock, and um, I probably should have pressed play here. It it ran away on um into the close. It did some did some sort of reverse split over the weekend, and I'm not sure what um uh, what the details are, but it. it it was trading at around nine bucks and then it opened and just kind of waved around and for some reason it started taking off taking off at, at power hour from nine bucks to eleven bucks right or nine fifty to eleven bucks i was like I, I know this stock i hate this stock i'm gonna short this thing once i f find the first sign of weakness here right so let's fast forward here i um shorted it uh, at um 348 with 12 minutes to go just emotions guys this is revenge in the purest form right i never forget things so two years later i'm coming back for you red and uh it kind of what i saw is just so extended look how extended it is right and it's kind of already topping out double top one minute chart double top two minute chart a uh, huge blow off wick candle here on the five i waited for it to crack the 11 dollar hole number look how extended it is on the 15 right this is so far away i really thought we were going to get back to 10.50 at least here, uh, VWAP if there was more time, but the time was just ticking away, right? So we just run this thing. As you can see, markets, molasses, eh, nothing happening, right? Short right there, I think at, uh, I'm already short at this point, 1,000 shares. And um, it kind of just sold off into the close and I got out uh, basically at the bell right there and caught a little little move, I don't know, it was like 35 cents. It was one, it was one hour, kind of, it was, just wasn't enough time. That was a waste of time. Anyways, on to Tuesday. To, to, was it Tuesday or was it Wednesday? I think it was Tuesday. Twitter. Um, Twitter, right? Yeah, Tuesday. So Twitter ran up right, on earnings, really good earnings. Missed the orb there. Let's put on 5x speed. Missed this um, nice breakout above the um, pre-market level here that we had at 37.50. I think a lot of people missed it. It was just it's so fast, guys. This thing was really, really, um, really in play. And, and only Twitter's got a lot of volume as it is, right? A lot of algos trade this thing. Anyways, I missed that move and not a big deal, right? Because you don't want to full moon of these things. If you miss the initial move, you f this is how I look at it, okay? You miss the two minute orb, that's fine. Sometimes it'll it'll orb and then it'll do a consolidation candle and then it'll break up, right? So that kind of coincides with a five minute orb. You miss that, that's fine. Sometimes it, at minute 10 to minute 15, it will pull back and give you a flag, right? You miss that, then sometimes by a minute 30, you start seeing false breakouts and all that other stuff, right? So anyways, I missed it, that was a pop, and then I kind of, I took it, um, where are we at here? I took it at uh, 946.40, 946.40, let's just fast forward this thing here. 946.40, okay. So here, on the two minute and the five minute, what do you see, right? It's forming a flag. And I got long right here on the new two minute high, Right, I took the break. Obviously, some of the support traders helped me out here. They helped create this hammer. Talking about that the other day, guys buying the support on the pullbacks. Thank you for that. You guys give me um, the opportunity to get in on this break, right? As soon as it breaks. And this was a slow trade. It's a really slow trade. I put my stop here and I was looking for two to one. So I think my target was 39.50. Right, right, put the range order in. Let's go one minute per second. I want you guys to look at this. I exited everything at 10.21. So that was. Um, <clears throat> 35 minutes, but I want you guys to see this. It came back to my break even once, right here. Look, during this, it was chopping around, hovering around my break even. It didn't get rattled out, right? Came back, uh, put me underwater here, back to my break even here, came back even here, right? I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm in here with a stop with a range order, and I'd walked away. I don't really care, right? Um, and then when I came back, this is when uh, we kind of started. Uh, this flag held itself, held its ground. A little fake out there, and then uh, I my my order was hit right. But I want you guys to see where it caught the support right. So as soon as it started kind of losing the nine, it catches it at the twenty. Or sorry, this is the eight I have. It catches it at the twenty. When it's losing it on the one there, it's not, uh, the two right, it catches it at the eight and the twenty, roughly right. And then when that fails, then you're trying to catch at the five. And I think this is where this hit. It hit at the five, and uh, is where it kind of bounced back and let me get out of that trade. So. Strong hands, uh, don't don't get shaken out of break even, guys. It depends what type of trader you are. You know, if you're trying to get in and out really fast, then maybe take some stabs, get in and out. Commissions are cheap, right? That, that used to be my mentality. But now where I'm kind of uh, looking for bigger moves, I knew that Twitter was gonna hit something on the daily here. 
it was, we had a level on the daily at uh, 40, 50 or something, right? So I knew that I was gonna be okay if I got in somewhere here. My, if my target is a dollar away from that, that, uh, that upper uh, profit target, then it's probably eventually gonna hit throughout the day, especially being this strong, right? So don't get shaken out or break even. Uh, hold to your ground if you are a um, patient trader. Okay, so that's Twitter. And uh, that was that, four, about $4 commissions on $500 profit, guys, 1%, right? That's all it takes. Uh, I know that a lot of people in the room have been talking about ECN rebates and all this other stuff. Just, I, I don't risk it. I get filled uh, using Andrew's hotkeys, right? I'm getting filled at the ask on the long and I'm uh, shorting at the bid on, on uh, shorts, right? I just want to get filled. I don't care. I don't want to miss a trade because I was trying to penny pinch and look, get some three cent rebate. It's not worth it in the long run, right? Imagine if I missed this trade because my limit order didn't hit and I was looking for a rebate. So I missed 500 bucks because I was trying to pick up three pennies off the ground. Not worth it, guys. Okay, so when we get to Wednesday, you guys, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. You guys remember, remember Wednesday was really, really choppy, right? So I didn't take a trade on Wednesday. I sat out the entire session. Where's that? I sat out the entire session here. So as you can see, this is my only trade, right? And I honestly didn't even want to take this trade. I sat out the morning and then I was just walking by the station at 1.15 and I saw this um, this thing form here. Let's just go back here. Go back, 1.15, 5x. I saw this, um, you know, Tesla had sold off, right? And we're in this huge downtrend. It was extended, this is my bad, right? One leg down, consolidation, second leg down. And it was, I, I go to press the button here and I got filled down here instantly right look at the the um the timestamps on this i go to press the button at the uh, 30 i get filled at i get filled here at 260.62 which is basically the bottom of the wick when i meant to get in on this break right i wanted to take the break take this break at 261 i got filled down here and i was like well there goes the risk to reward that's garbage so i just got out i got out at uh, basically 20 seconds after i was in the trade right it's it just didn't make sense anymore to me and it just took a little seven dollar loss that was whack uh you know tesla can be really crazy i saw in the time in sales that it was basically everyone saw the same thing i did and uh you know that sometimes it just happens right I, uh, there was a wave of orders between 261 uh to uh basically two 260.60 where I where I got filled this is massive volume influx came in you see this bar right and uh, I got filled at the tail end of that so that all these things happen but if you find this is one thing too you guys gotta realize this if you're trying to get risk reward of two to one three to one whatever it may be this is your entry right entry this is your stop this is measure distance this is your target right this right this you got to think of it as bands so as soon as your entry gets closer to your target, right? Say your entry gets to here, it messes everything up, right? It's a, a little bit makes a big difference. If you're late 10 cents in the entry, your target now has to be 20 cents further, right? Because it's times two for two to one. You now are looking for 20 cents further distance, and it messes everything up. So entries, everything, guys. Entry is everything. Um, and as you guys saw in the recap from yesterday, I take the breakout because I like the confirmation. I'd rather take take that than the pull up. But if you fast forward, I actually would have got stopped out of this thing if I stayed in the trade. It decided to pull up, huge massive bar. Uh, you know how Tesla can be, just random $2 candles uh, before it just flushed, 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 flushed. So this is the area I got um, shaken out of, but it ended up selling off for another two, three bucks. And that's, uh, you know, that's that's impulse, guys. I used to lock my montage all the time. I'm start, probably need to start doing that again because these are old habits. I sometimes walk by the station, I'm in my underwear or whatever the hell I'm doing, holding the baby in one hand. Next thing you know, I'm leaning over and pressing a hockey. I'm like, holy shit, I'm in a trade. Um, these are old habits, you know, impulse, compulsiveness. They, they really got to die eventually. So thankfully I caught myself here because the old Robert probably would have just been stayed in there and see what happens. But the new Robert, 22 seconds to, to, for me to realize that I just need to get the hell out of that thing. Not bad. Okay, so that's that. And then yesterday I talked about Xilinx and I don't, know, don't need to go through that. Let's, uh, let's talk about today. So what happened to me today? My first trade of the day, I got caught in the wrong side of this thing. So MU sold off really heavily, right? There's a gap down, sold off, and I took a short on kind of this um, this pull up here, right? I was looking for a second leg, because that was only one leg. The five looked pretty good, right? The five at the time looked like it was going to be a bear flag. Fifteen was looking to be a fifteen minute orb. Got squeezed, and Brian and Carlos were on the right side of this trade. They saw the double bottom, right? So, um, you know, this can either go this way or this way, right? And uh, I got squeezed. These, these guys squeezed me. This <laughs> 
not a big deal. It stopped out, right? Uh, and the squeeze was massive. It took us all the way up to uh, 41.60 from 41. 60 cent squeeze. This is what happens, guys, when everyone is uh, has to cover on mass, right? It's just like, boom, get me out of this trade. Just get me the hell out of this thing, right? And that just triggers a trade reaction. People who who looked away for 10 seconds, next thing you know, they're at the view apps. Holy smokes, get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out. Till we get to this point, right? So that was my first trade. It was a loser minus 1.1 R with the slippage. Just how massive, how usually I'm used is pretty good with the slippage, but this was it was violent. The pop was violent. You can ask Carlos and Brian. Um, they were uh, they were on the other side of that. Not a big deal, right? We're sometimes you're, I'm on the other side of a trade with Andrew. Right? I'm looking for a bigger move. He's shorting here. He catch, he catches his move. He gets out here. I'm long here. I'm out here. Right? You know, you guys, we can make money um, whilst being against each other because we're looking at different things and uh well actually while we're on that topic here this this this, this com comes up a lot right people uh actually let's use this example for nvidia okay so nvidia 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 this this thing also sold off today and a lot of people in the room caught that big flush i don't think anyone expected it to flush as far as it did that was like a five six dollar flush and it did one leg two legs and then it started rounding out here and this is a, a trade I, I picture norm taking this trade for some reason so norm was away from the room today and maybe um you know spiritually he reached out to me or something but i, I took this trade on his behalf I, i'd picture norm taking it long here like he just is able to cap, catch these bottoms uh with uh scary precision so i took it here when it kind of started rounding out but what what my indicator was the, the 15 minute candle here and you guys know on my reversal i like to, i like for it to be extended from the view app i like the risk the reward to make sense but this is a play i'm starting to starting to do more i usually do it closer to the view app is I, I look for um, a squeeze, a squeeze type of maneuver. It's a view app reversal. Let's just not get fancy. It's a view app reversal. But rather than getting out the view app, I saw this uh, candle being established. I was like, you know, if we can get to the view app and close with a solid white candle, then we're probably going to do an ABCD off the view app. I've seen that a million times, right? Uh, and, and often people are trying to short here, right? Because they think that's oh, a false breakout. But one thing I'm starting to realize here is that when something comes through the view app, that's not a signal for you to either go long or short. You have to wait to see what it does, right? So when something comes through the view app, like it does here, it comes back to test it before it goes, right? That's the move, right? This taking it before the, the test is a gamble. It's a gamble, straight up a gamble, right? So if it comes from the other side, you want it to see come back and test and then go down. So this one came through and busted through, right? Busted through and uh, just kind of started trending upwards here. I had a two to one set, set. I got missed, I got skipped here by a penny or two. Really frustrated when I came back to check the station. I was like, oh, I'm done, I, I missed that. But uh, it continued on, I just held my ground, strong hands, and I finally was able to get out here and two partials. I don't know why I got greedy there. I should have just left the range order. But basically, I canceled the range order and it blew through uh, my target. And I was like, oh sweet, I'm gonna get a three to one. Then I caught myself, I was like, yeah, just, just get out. This is the same thing I did on Skechers on Friday of last week, right? So as you can see, I'm trying to be more disciplined, but guys, the fear, the greed, all this stuff is very strong. So trying to stick to the guns like I did on Twitter, just let it set and forget it. Stop trying to micromanage this stuff because this is what happens. You get stressed out and all this for no reason. All right, so that's NVIDIA. Uh, those are those two trades. Now, uh, is there time? still time? I don't care. I'm, I'm just ranting. I'm going to talk about a trade on Tesla today. So Tesla, I was in the in the chat room in the afternoon just making calls about what was happening and um, just doing play-by-play -play analysis for, for people here. But I saw something really interesting that uh, I wanted to share with you guys here. So Tesla decided to rebound right out of nowhere right into the close here, right around 320 and I kind of um, called it. I said, okay, this is probably the move, right? Because I saw a number of things here that are very interesting to me. Let's actually make this Tesla too. Tesla. Okay, and let's go one minute candles, 10 minute candles and toolbar. Okay, so here's the balance, right? And 10 minute, sorry for that. Okay, so I want you guys to see something here. So it broke low of the day, right? Uh, broke low of the day, flushed, and then faked out reversal on this inverted hammer. People started taking it here, I believe. Faked out and then cracked that again and flushed, right? So this is the crack. You can see the volume came in, right? It cracked and then and then kind of bottomed at 231 here, right? And then it couldn't go any lower, which is interesting. Usually when you see that crack, it, it would go further. You got four consolidation candles on the one minute. Now I want you guys to see something really interesting here. This huge influx of volume came 
So people play in this, right? They say, okay, this is probably going to pull back. They take it here, right, on a breakup. Now that coincided on the two-minute chart with this huge candle here, right? Right off this little uh, spinning top breakup. Okay, the momentum carries. Okay, so one people trading off the ones that come in, people trading off the twos that come in. All of a sudden, next thing you know, people looking at the fives, like, holy smokes, this thing came back with a vengeance. It's engulfing now, right? Okay, maybe this is a good long here, right? Uh, take it here and uh, put your stop here. And then people in the 10 started seeing this thing, so like, holy smokes, boom, it just engulfed, right? Now it's engulfing, I'm in. Next thing you know, I saw it on the 15. 15 started making a new 15 minute high. I was like, okay, this is interesting, right? You see that? New high, new high, new high, new high, new high. I was like, let's look in the larger time frames. What happened? Same situation. We put in the first, that chain reaction from one, two, five, 10, 15, led to the first white candle of the day on the 30 minute chart. And anyone trading on a larger time frame, right? They're kind of riding this thing down. They, they have no reason to cover, right? Is it for a longer term hold until they see this. And they say, okay, that's uh, probably gonna pull back now, right? That at least pull back to the moving average. So people start to cover and into the close on the weekend, just, it's just, it's just sparked a huge chain reaction. You had the spinning top and then all of a sudden the next candle boosted. Look at the volume really come in here off this boost. New 30 minute high led to a new 60 minute. Actually, no, this isn't a close there, but basically we close as a big white candle. And now actually in the after hours here, kind of come back up to 238. So anyways, that was interesting. Um, it was a chain reaction. I've seen this kind of happen before. Sometimes you see something reverse out of nowhere, right? The 15 doesn't really give you an indication. I really believe that it's just so many things happening at once. People trading off all sorts of different time frames, just seeing things, seeing their indicator to get in. Right, we see this often. Um, things lead to other things. It's a chain reaction. That's not to say the one-minute traders drove the whole move. Right, people started seeing this. Maybe they were trading off the one and the five. They saw that. They saw that. It's like I'm going long. Maybe they're trading off the two and the fifteen. Right, it's things I look at and they're like, okay, so I see that. And, you know, but that's a new high. I'm taking that. Right. And then you had people in the thirties like, oh, that's an interesting candle. I'm gonna have to cover. Or I'm gonna take a reversal. So the more eyes that see things, the the more powerful the move. I thought that was really interesting. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. So let's just wrap it up here. Uh, I want to give you guys some some advice going forward for anyone just going live, right? Just going live. Please, guys, don't worry about the commit commissions. Number one, comms. Just don't forget, just try to trade properly, right? Number two, trade small. Please trade small. You want to be able to trade and learn to trade real money without the emotions. You want to be able to, um, you know, to be patient, take the right setups. The, the, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You don't want to be taking bad trades that don't work out, right? You want to take good trades that don't work out because that's part of the game. And when you when you start getting more comfortable trading real money, right? You're developing good habits, right? You want to focus on the form, and then you scale up, right? Then you scale up, and then you can start. Uh, trying new things or whatever, but the key is survival, right? Don't go out trading uh, live with a huge size on your first day. I've seen it so many times, guys. It's a recipe for disaster because you're not ready for it emotionally. And uh, the analogy is like, you know, if, you, if you're just learning how to lift weights, right? You're just going to the gym. You got a personal trainer or whatever it is, right? You're you're starting small. You're doing five pounds. You know, you're curling five pounds, whatever, little two pound things because you're focusing on form, right? Form first so you don't injure yourself. Then eventually you're doing it long enough that you're going to be that gym rat, right? You're going to be showing off and wearing, a, you know, a ripped uh, muscle shirt or whatever. And who cares about form? You're just, uh, you know, trying to bench as much as you can there, right? But you have to be able to survive that first three months, right? So stay small, focus on consistency, and then scale up gradually, right? Scale up gradually as you get better with consistency. Don't scale up because you have to chase back losses, right? You're going to take a hit. You're gonna take a hit when you first go live, right? The question is how much you're gonna lose here, right? You're gonna be losing while you're trading $20 risk, $30 risk, or you're gonna be losing $500 a trade because that's gonna take much longer to come back. And this is one thing I'm always telling people too, right? These losses here, if you can keep them as small as you can, right? Trading really small. Once you start getting consistent, it's gonna be peanuts to get that those losses back. So you lose, I don't know, three grand, right? In your first three months learning this thing right then you can scale up scale up scale up once you get to decent size so you're taking 200 dollars risk per trade making 400 dollars per trade we well, need eight trades guys to make that money back you're gonna make it back eventually right so just focus on surviving the learning curve 
Okay, that's a long video. And uh, if you guys may just till the end here, um, check out the website for the Bearable Trader Challenge on Monday. Have a great weekend. See you in the room and uh, take care.